Encik dengar saya ke? Okey sekarang kita nak start Ada bunyi bising eh Buang nafas Okey Tahan nafas Cardiac Magnetic Resonance Imaging What it does is it just takes images of the heart and it takes beautiful images of the heart in a 3D dimension Is it coming more common? It's the new kid in town It's been around now for the past 6 to 7 years but it's definitely coming a modality that a lot of us are using nowadays In the MRI machine, we have two types of machine 1.5T and 3T MRI in a, for a cardiac MRI, the best machine that is suitable is 1.5T because less artifact produced and the images are sharper compared to the 3T MRI. Datuk Sanjeev and me has developed a lot of sequences in determining the diagnosis. Example, the images here to diagnose coronary arteries. So we can see the coronary artery starting from uh, which part they call the anomalous coronary artery which we have developed the sequence here. Another diagnosis is M MVO. We have, uh, we have created a sequence without giving contrast. What you hear now is actually the machine taking images, right? It basically can tell you everything. It can tell you certain factors that are better than other modalities and there are some in which it's inferior to other modalities. But if you talk about what it can and cannot tell you, it can basically tell you everything from the, from the very start. So we actually look at morphology, structural abnormalities, viability that means telling you whether the muscle is alive or not alive whether you should revascularize or not and last but not least we can tell you perfusion that means we can tell you whether there is a block inverted commas or ischemic lesion whether we should do an or do not do an angiogram so it does the workforce of an echocardiogram it does the workforce of a ct and it does the workforce of a pet scan all together so there are advantages and disadvantages of using it There are relatively very few do's or don'ts. And, you know, if you have a pacemaker or a metal object inserted into your body, you have to let us know in beforehand. If you're coming for a stress perfusion, then we use adenosine. So if you're an asthmatic, so we'll take extra precautions. The patient generally doesn't have to do anything much for the procedure as such. We, we do everything for them. It's usually quite smooth. It takes about half an hour in the average. All the patient has to do is lie down flat like that. We give them straight instructions as to what they need to and need not do. We use an ECG gauge machine and as you can hear the instructions, once they're in the machine, there's a lot of sound that, that goes through. There are three or four different protocols. Okay, there's a stress perfusion protocol, there's a morphology protocol, there's a viability protocol. So if you're doing a stress perfusion protocol, it takes about well, 35 to 40 minutes and a viability protocol takes about 20 minutes. Morphology takes about 15 minutes. All depends on whether the patient is compatible or not. If they obey instructions, it's rather quick. But if they don't obey instructions, it might take some time because some people get claustrophobic in a machine like that. 